Here we go. Javante Tank Davis. Yeah, what's good? Up in here, man. H how old are you now? 23. 23. Yes. One of the youngest dudes to to get the titles and so forth, man. Yes. So you actually have an interesting background. Yeah. You're from Baltimore. Yes. Okay. And you actually said, like, it was worse than The Wire. Yeah. Explain. Um, it's definitely worse than The Wire, you know, um... Super small, so it's like it's it's easy to get in. You know what I mean? Get in contact with someone like, cause Baltimore is just so big. It's like you could be, I could be around my whole city in fifteen minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been to Baltimore. Matter of fact, I met up with little Melvin. You know, you know yeah, that is yeah, yeah. that. That's the character that that the yeah. wire was based on, the the kingpin. Yeah. And um, I remember, uh, I've never seen so many boarded up houses, like just blocks and blocks of boarded up houses. Mm -hmm. There's really just a lot of, you know, just a, uh, you know, a lot of very poor poor people out there. Yeah. You know, they're they're kind of struggling to get by. Now, now you actually. Um, you know, when you were growing up, your your parents were on drugs. Yeah, both of my both both of my parents was on drugs. Sad, on on uh, crack or was it? Something yeah, else? you know, so um, they were both on drugs, and um, my mo my mother left me and my brother in in the house by herself. You know, so um, they took us into custody. You know, and uh, you know, we we my grandma fought to get us back for about. She, about a good three years. How come they wouldn't just give you uh give you guys to to the grandmother? Um, because I, I to be honest, I was young, so I I want I I don't know. Yeah. So, but she fought she fought um to get us back, and they finally got us back. You know, so we was the new kids on the block. You know, I was fighting a lot, fighting at school, fighting on the block. You know, so my uncle saw me fight. Um, outside, outside my doorstep. So he took me to the gym. So once he took me to the gym, um, I felt that love that I wasn't getting at home. Cause I was all, I was a bad like kid. I was like always active. So I was always doing stuff. So I wasn't getting the love that I was getting at home. You know, so I loved it at the gym. Right, because you were in foster homes for like what three years? Yeah. I mean, I've I've heard horror stories about this. Like, I I know girls that went through the foster system, and they were like, "I was in fifty four homes. I was in twenty eight homes. Like, you know, like you don't stay in a stable family, right? So they were just moving you yeah, around moving, like that. Yeah, they was moving around. They um, we was in we was in a group home. Then we went to uh, for, uh we went to uh, what's called yeah, group home. Then we went with my uncle. Then we went back to group home. Then we finally went with my grandmother. What do you think was the hardest thing that, you know, you had to go through during that time? Because you know, no kid should should go through that. Uh, just it wasn't it wasn't a group home. It was just when I got to uh, around my my family, you know, I was my brother was the favorite coming up because I was always bad, so I was always into stuff. So they never looked it at me like I was going to be something growing up. You know, I was always that bad kid. My grandma used to say my, her other grad kids was her favorite and things like that. So, That's I mean, that, I mean yeah. I'm laughing, but it's, you know, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't funny at the time. Yeah. So you started boxing at seven? Yeah, I started boxing at seven. And then you won your first championship at 10? Yeah, I won my first uh, championship, world title, world championship at uh, 10 years old. Man, I, I would hate to be a 10 year old around you during that <laughs> time, boy. I wish yeah. you was. He was whooping some kids up in school during that time. Yeah. I mean, being a champion at ten, that means no one in the school was messing with you. Yeah, I was I was young. You had to be ten to go away, so I won it when I was ten, so Okay. How did it feel to win a championship? So so is that golden gloves or is that considered something else? No, it was the silver gloves. Okay. Yeah, so I was fresh out of um just coming to the that was my first tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, um I was young. I was and young. you went all the way. Yeah, I, I, Woo! I had to go through uh three three states. You know, so I had to go to, um, I had to fight in Baltimore, D.C., Georgia, then I had to go to Kansas City. So you go from having this hard-ass life, parents on drugs, in and out of foster homes, 
you know, trouble with the family, to now you have something that you're incredible at, yeah. at, at 10 years old. Yeah. I mean, did it, did it really start to change your mentality and, and your outlook? I mean, I started traveling when I was young, you know. So my, my mindset was different from a normal 10 year old that's coming out of Baltimore. You know, I seen more, I done more, you know, so my mind, my, when I, you know, travel, my mindset was, it's ready for me to, you know, to take off, mm -hmm. do better, bigger and better things. So you dropped out of high school to pursue boxing? Yes. Okay, you got your GED later though? Yes. Okay, which is dope. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, so you started, from 10 years old, you continue to keep, keep competing and everything else like that um, until, I guess, 2012 was the Golden Globe Championships? Yeah, 2012 was the Golden Globe Championships. Okay, so but were you doing competitions that, that whole time between then? Yeah, I was actually, I mean, it, it always been hard for me, you know, until about, I want to say, two years, two years ago. You know, so <clears throat> I've been going through my stages, you know, staying focused. Um, people that I looked up to in the gym, all of them, you know, dead or in jail. So it was really left up to me to, you know, stay focused and do okay. what I had to do. So you got the championship in 2012, the Golden Club. Yes. I, That's I, considered amateur, right? Do you win any money for that or, or not? No, 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 I ain't win no money. I was just, I was still in the amateur. I was about, I want to say like 17, 16, 17, you know, when I won it. Dope. So at 17, yeah, you won the Golden Gloves. Yeah, so it was like 17 to men, so I'm fighting men. You know, fighting people that's older than thirty year olds like, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to compete. Then, that's dope, man. So then you tried out for the Olympic team, but you didn't make it. No, I was too young for the Olympic team. Oh. Yeah, I was too okay. young. I was, I, I was seventeen, so I couldn't. They was already. Oh, they already yeah. had that 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 set team. Oh, so you had to be eighteen. Yeah, you had to be eighteen. Okay. The time. I'm sure, you're kind of upset over that. Yeah, I was mad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then you made your professional debut when you turned 18. Yes. Okay, and then what happened then? Um, I actually, at the, my pro debut, I, I fought on Lamont, Lamont on the card, the one that's about to fight Earl Spence, mm -hmm. and Adrian Broner walked me out. I mean, he, so he was like a big brother to me, so he walked me out. You know, from there, I, I, I was actually scared, you know, just turning pro, I'm coming from the amateur, I'm fighting a grown man. You know, with little gloves on, you know, so I was scared. Yeah, right, because the professional gloves are how many ounces? Eight. Right, and the amateur gloves are? They 12 and 10. And do you wear headgear? And yes, pen. Right, yeah. so, so you're going from a more of a protected <laughs> environment with a headgear, yeah. big padded gloves, to yeah. no headgear, little, Yeah. you know, so, little, little thin gloves. Yeah, I was super nervous. You know, I was super okay. scared. Now, were you with, with Mayweather at that time or no? No. Okay, this is before that. Okay, yeah. so so you have your first professional fight. Yeah. How'd you do? Great. Uh, <laughs> I knocked him out the first round. First round knockout. 15 out. seconds. Okay. Yeah. Right, because I guess people had actually been comparing you to like a young Mike Tyson. Yeah, they compared me to Mike Tyson, a younger Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Well, you know, Floyd doesn't knock people out in the first round. That's, <laughs> that's a Tyson thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so you get in the ring. Your first professional fight, Adrian Broner's walking you out. Yeah. And you knock this dude out in the first round. Yeah. How many seconds? 15 seconds. 15 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> That's some Tyson shit. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if you followed Tyson's career yeah. like that, but that, that that's what he was known for. He'd yeah. walk in, people would be like getting ready to sit down, and yeah. then the fight would be over. You know what I mean? He's definitely a young animal. He was at that time. Right. So you knock this dude out in 15 seconds. Yes. How did that feel? Great, you know, um, I felt like I was on top of the world. I wanted, wanted to fight more. And at what point did you and Floyd hook up? Um, I actually, uh, I fought about like six more times, um, knockouts. Uh, I signed to Al Heyman. Al Heyman is, you know, um, he over top of Floyd, you know, and um, I signed to him, had some fights with him. Then I signed with uh, um, Floyd Mayweather. So I'm with Floyd, I want to say about close to three years now ago. Okay. Signed to him. Um, I signed to him when he fought uh, Madonna. Mm. I actually went to Vegas off of um, me and Adrian. 
I was coming in as Adrian fighter. You know, uh, Floyd had his fighter, and me and his fighter fought. You know, and he he liked me. Floyd liked the way I did. And then he flew me back that next week, and I've been with him ever since. Okay, because I guess there were some rumors that there was like some some deals you had with some street dudes that you had to get out of or something like that. I mean, it it wasn't it wasn't no they're not street dudes. Let's get that clear. No, okay, all right. So, um, but there was some sort of deals. yeah. We had we had um a man I had a management deal with them, you know. And, uh, we cleared that up, and that's when I signed with Floyd. So now you sign. With the biggest fighter in the world. Yes. The most prominent, most money, everything else like that. Did you and Floyd build a relationship before you signed or was it kind of pretty quick? Uh no, we uh I asked was what Floyd for the whole summer before I signed with him. You know, before I even, you know, signed anything on paper. He already bought me. Cause he bought me jewelry and things like that, so he was just buying you shit. Yeah, I was already out with him, living the life, riding on boats and things like that. So, so he was buying you cars and jewelry yeah. before you even signed. Yes, so you could have just walked away and then had a bunch of yeah, yeah, yeah. bunch yeah. of Floyd shit basically, yeah. and it would have been whatever. Yeah, he bought me watches, jewelry, like cars, okay. sixty thousand dollar car. Okay, is that watch something Floyd gave you or no? No, this not this. Okay, so you go and sign to the money team. Yes. How did it feel to actually do that? Um, you know, Floyd Mayweather is, you know, the greatest. You know, um, coming up, he was that, that number one guy for us. So just have, just having him back me and you know take me under his wing is amazing. You know, I'm definitely appreciate, appreciative, and I'm definitely ready to, you know, take off. You know. Right, cause. You can say what you want about Floyd, but like his dedication to what he does, you know, because yeah. I know people that have, you know, trained, been part of his like entourage and yeah. stuff like that. And like, he don't fuck around. Nah, like nah, he nah. don't, you know, I mean, even, even with the, with this last fight when he was fighting a UFC fighter, yeah. like he took that shit serious. Like, like, like he don't, he don't get in that ring without the proper, you know, training every single time. Yeah. He don't drink. He don't smoke. No. Trains his ass off. Yeah. Like he definitely um dedicated. Yeah. Definitely dedicated. You said you learned a lot financially from Floyd. Yeah, he. I mean, when we sit down, we don't only just talk about boxing. You know, he look at me as his son. You mm -hmm. know, he give me game on. You know, life period. You know, sometimes I get. I'm young. I still. I'm gonna move at a fast pace, so sometimes he tell me to slow down and things like that. Things will come, you know, along the time. Just stay focused and build your team, and make right decisions. Okay, have you had disagreements with him? Um, we had disagreements, but not nothing that over the top. You know, that's that's just father and son love. Right, because I guess there are certain fights that you want to do that he didn't want for you at the time. I guess with the the Sosa the Sosa fight. Uh, not the Sosa. It was the um, the Lomachenko fight. Right, the Lomachenko fight. Who's considered one of the greatest? You know, I mean, like the greatest. Who, okay, maybe not the but the, yeah, the greatest the right greatest, now. He only got ten fights. But right now, people are looking at him a certain type of way. People could look at him. Okay, let's just look up his his the guys he fought. Ten, ten, ten people. How can we say this man the greatest when people like Muhammad Ali fought 90 okay. times? I meant, I meant the greatest right now. I don't mean the greatest overall. You're right. I, I was wrong in that uh, in that assessment. Right now, he's considered one of the top dudes. We can say top, not the greatest. Because he, he destroyed dude in that last fight. Who? What was that? Uh, uh, Brigadal? Yeah, right. He was two-way classes. That's like <laughs> me fighting my little brother. We can't do that. We can't do that. Come on. <laughs> well, you want to fight him, but I guess Floyd doesn't want you to fight him yet. Yeah, because you know um, Lomachenko, he he's he old. Well, in boxing years, he old. You know, he thirty years old, so he he trying to rush the fights. You know, he won his fights for him. He won them. You know, he know his 
his door is closed when we're on boxing, so he want to get, you know, um, how many big fights he can. And I, I am one of the biggest fight in 130 other than him. So he want to he wanna cash out. Well, Mayweather uh, commented on this. He said, if you want to fight till you're 36 to 37, you still got 15 years left. You know, he's okay, but if you rush and fight all the hard fights right now, you're not going to be able to do, to make it to 38 or 39 in the boxing business. Yeah, that's it's smart, smart decision. That's why he he took the less punishment and made the most money by a smart decision. And why would I go against his word? You know, and he the greatest that did it. Right, so he basically doesn't want you to fight the harder fights now because he wants you to have a, a longer career. Yeah, but not he not... He want me to he he want me to take the right fights at the right time. That's basically what he's saying. Okay, because you're eighteen and zero. Yes. No, I'm nineteen and zero. Nineteen and zero. My bad. Yes. Eighteen knockouts. Eighteen knockouts. Yes. Who didn't you knock out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you worry, like for example, in, in football, CTE is a big thing. Mm -hmm. and they don't focus on it as much in boxing, but clearly the same type of rules apply, if not more so. You know, like I um, I interviewed Yusuf Mack, mm -hmm. right? And um, he slurs when he mm -hmm. talks. And he, he we, we talked about how he's been hit in the head so many times that it's fucked up his speech. Mm -hmm. And when did you officially retire at some point? No, it's like I retired my last fight. I was like, I don't want it no more. Okay, and when was that? What? It was about a year and a half ago. Okay, so 2014? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I ain't, I ain't hungry for it no more. I don't want to get hurt. Okay, so 2014, you felt that you was gonna walk away before. Yeah. You know, because you see, you know, certain fighters. I mean, they messing with my speech, so, you know. Really, so your speech you think is from the boxing yeah. and getting hit in the head? It is, I know it is. Okay, so when you first started boxing? I was regular. All I did was laugh, joke, you know. Sure. You had a lot of concussions? No. I think I got one now, though. I get bad headaches every right. now and then. Okay. Now, Floyd seems fine. Yeah. You, know, you see certain fight, fighters that seem fine, certain fighters you could tell. You know, I mean, look at Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I mean, that, that I believe, was... We're not totally sure, but it seems like it was connected to all, yeah. the, all the punishment he took. Do you worry about that? On the Muhammad Ali stage, I think they fought a lot in that area. Um, and for most boxers, it don't really happen when you when you compete inside uh, when you you know you're really fighting at a fight. It happened when you in the gym and you training, you sparring six guys and what. Doing it for like fifteen rounds, and that's when it happened. When you constantly keep sparring, you know that's why I don't spar a lot. That's why I don't always go to the gym and you know wear my body down. You know I take I take breaks because I'm still young, I'm still growing. So it's a limit that you that you that you take and you want to wear on your body. You know because I'm still growing, I'm still want to be able to talk to my kids. I want to still you know make smart decisions. That's why Floyd say it's not. Good to fight so many hard fights up front and not, you know, in the back end. It's mm -hmm. it's all about timing. You signed with Under Armour. Yes, I'm signed down. Uh, One of the big. Uh, yes. Oh, I see your man. The home team. Over here. The home team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, you talk about there's only a few major uh, athletic brands: Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. Yes. You know, so you're with one of the big three. Yes. How did it feel to sign a deal like that? Um, it felt great, you know. They from Baltimore, so oh right, just yeah, yeah, yeah. them backing backing me. It feel amazing, you know. Um, I'm, I'm I'm thankful and grateful just to have them in my corner, you know, with my first deal, and them showing me that type of love. It's amazing. Absolutely, man. Congrats. Thank Congrats. you. Congrats. A lot of a lot of boxers. It seems like boxers don't really get those types of deals a lot. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's a new area now, so it's it's different. Yeah, you see, like watch companies yeah. and you know, Hublot. Well, back you know. in the day, it was like you can't be tat. You had you can't have tattoos. 
because the hmm. sponsor did, uh, sponsorship won't want you. Now you got have tattoos. And I mean, look at the NBA. I mean, yeah. you know, if they said no tattoos. No, but I'm saying boxer, like, boxing, you you in the ring and they don't, they don't like the tattoos. I mean, that's why Floyd kept it clean. You know what I mean? Oh, that's why. Yeah. Because so, he wanted. Yeah. But you know, but Floyd never really took sponsorship money, it seems. No. Like, like people, this is what I'm saying. You can say what you want about Floyd, but like this dude made like hundreds of millions of dollars with no sponsorships. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, Hugh Blow might sponsor a fight here and there, but it's like, you don't see him doing commercials. You don't see him like, you know, like doing gotta, nothing else but really boxing. Yeah, you got to pay for that. Yeah. They're going to talk cheap, then it's no reason to talk to Floyd. Oh, so that's what it is? The companies would always approach him, but it, they never had the right check? I mean, if he didn't take that deal, I don't see Floyd turning down no major money. But right. you talking cheap, it's no Floyd. Okay. There's rumors about you and Trina? Nah, Trina's a good friend. We just took that picture. Yeah? Got nothing more, nothing less. She just came up when she... Yeah, she, she she's in a uh, relationship with yeah, someone. Yeah, she's in a relationship. See that picture, though? Yeah, what picture? The one with her, with the white. Oh, yeah. That Woo! Was, <laughs> I Woo! Said, now I was like, jeez. Man! Man. See, that, that, that Instagram thing she put up? <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. it was nice. You and uh, Adrian Broner. Mm-hmm. You know, he brought you out the first time. But at one point, you guys were kind of beefing at one point? Yeah, we had a mis- uh, mis- uh, we had a disagreement. I mean, I can see how with Adrian that could happen. He seems pretty, you know, he's impulsive. Yeah. I he's mean, hot-headed. I- you know, we fuck with him. He's been on Vlad TV a few times. Like, yeah. we, we fuck with, with Adrian. But it seemed like... Adrian wake up on the wrong side of the bed that day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> He's mad and it's, it's going to spill into some shit. No, nah, I don't think he liked that, but, I mean, we just got into it, you know, we, uh, it was a, a bad night, you know, so we got over, we talked it out, like brothers, and we kept, we moved it forward. He's had some problems, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talk about? Well, man, man, he he's had some problems. <laughs> you know this, but you know I can look it up if you like. You know, since you wanna, you know, pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know no problem. I don't know nothing about nobody else's business. I mean, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. He, he went on a rampage back last September where he knocked some dude out. For real? For real? <laughs> you never heard about this? Nah. You want to see the video? Yeah, let me see it. He died? No, he didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> you would hear about that. <laughs> Nobody died. Damn, I wouldn't want to get punched by Adrian Broner. That's crazy. He punched him? Yeah. That shit sounds like a car crash. <laughs> yeah, Adrian Adrian put them falls on him. Um I mean, I, I like him, man. But, you know, at one point he was at odds with Floyd, it seemed, and then they got back together. And then, you know what I mean? It's almost like a, you know. We had disagreements. So you and uh, Tevin Farmer got into, a, I guess, an argument? Yeah. We've been going at it for a minute. I went to Philly, uh, called his, his guy's phone, called his phone, couldn't get in contact with him. Um. I had a fight on uh, uh, Floyd on the card, and uh, I would ask him, can he fight me? And then when his opponent fell out, he felt as though he trying to fight me on the last minute just to make some money, top money. And he just fought for, for my belt, my vacant belt. Mm-hmm. And he lost. Okay. So... I mean, I don't know how he want to fight me and he keep losing. That don't add up. Now, last year you had an assault charge that was ultimately dismissed. Yes. What, what was that about? Um, I guess my brother, homeboy, they came in the gym. My brother disrespected my mother, and I just wasn't allowing that to happen. Well, this was your brother? Yeah. And your, your actual brother or your yeah, friend? Yeah, my blood brother. Your blood brother yes. came in to disrespect. No, he did disrespect my mother, and he came to my gym. Okay, he, same mother. 
Yeah, same mother. Okay. And and he came in the gym trying to speak to me. I said, I said no, like I I ignored him, and he got wild in the gym, and. It led to someone else. I, I I didn't put my hands on anyone. You didn't? No. Did someone else put hands on him? No. No one put I hands on know. nobody. Right. <laughs> so I don't know how I get a salt charge. Ain't that. That's why everything was dropped, dismissed. And, and why would someone even want to get into it with you like that? Especially, is your brother like your size or? No, nah, he bigger. Right. But he's he not brought, a boxer. No, nah, he brought like 190, 200 pounds. Can you weigh how much? Right now, by like 145. Okay, but still, he's not a professional fighter. No, nah, he was once a boxer. Not like you, though. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> we actually came into boxing at the same time. I just took it more serious than him. Did you guys ever fight as kids? Yeah. Yeah? Who would win? <laughs> yeah, I would win. Because I'm faster than him. I know I, you know what I mean? Fighting is my thing. I know how to Right. Do. Okay, so nothing happened. You you didn't go to jail. No. And ultimately, it was it was dropped. All, all the charges dropped. were dropped. And that, that's why I left to go to Vegas early. Oh, and that messed yeah, up yeah, your yeah. your yeah, weight. Later but on. It, it didn't. Nobody don't know about that. Like, I I left early because of that situation. You know what I mean, they just knew I had a assault charge after the fight. When was this? Uh, well, my last fight. Okay. I think it was me. What was the weight you were trying to make? 130. And you weighed how much? I think 131 or two. Okay. You were a pound or two over. Yeah. So so what happened? So the fight is set up, and then you go and weigh in, and then when you don't make weight, they just cancel the whole fight? No, nah, they actually um, take a cut from your pay. <laughs> And how did you lose by not by not making weight? Over a hundred thousand. Over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Damn, that that's one of them reality slaps right there. Like, thank you. We'll be taking that back. Yeah. Then I had to pay a percentage for the belt that I didn't get. Even oh. even when I won, I still didn't get the belt, and I still had to pay the percentage. I mean, that must have been heartbreaking. Yeah. That was crazy. Right, because I'm sure even before, because I mean. Before you weigh in, I'm sure you, you're sweating out and you're probably wearing that, you know, the suit to kind of get all the, the liquid out your body. And I knew I wasn't going to make it out. When when I trained and the, 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 I trained on that day, the weighing day, and I felt as though I wasn't sweating no more. So I was dehydrated. I tried to come down too quick. Mm -hmm. you know, so I knew coming in that I wasn't going to make it. <clears throat> but I called, I called Floyd, I called Al and let him know, you know, that, um, we took it. We took our loss as a team, and we were ready to bounce back. What did Floyd say to you when you told him that? Um, he told he, he, he's never not made weight, has he? No. Um, he told me that uh, try to push more, try try to work it off more, and you know, see what you could get off. But I knew I couldn't get it off at that time. You no, know, it was too. It was too close. It was too crunched, crunch, crunched in, so I couldn't make it. But I can I can make one thirty just at that point I was okay. Out. So they gave the the belt to the dude you were supposed to fight. No, no, they, no. I, he just got paid. Ah, so so is the bait the, the belt just vacant right now? No, it was vacant. Tevin and the guy from uh, Japan pulled the fort. I mean they fought and Tevin lost. So the guy from Japan got the belt. Okay, so you got to go get the belt from him now. No, I got to actually I got to fight for a eliminator. Ah. So it's somebody over me and I, man them, man him got to meet. So once I beat him, then I fight the guy in Japan, from Japan. Mm. Did your brother try to press charges or anything else like that? No, his friend, his friend tried. His to friend tried to press charges. His friend pressed charges. Press charges. Yeah. Did something happen to his friend? No. What the hell then? He pressed charges and they went, you know what I mean? And we had to clear it up. So you're just trying to get a couple bucks out of you, pretty much? Yeah, basically. They called me and said they want some money. I said, I'm not paying you nothing. <laughs> How much are they asking for? Like 10000 or something. 10000 Yeah. I said, I'm not paying y'all. 
Right. Crazy. I it's extortion. Give that, I can give that to my mother. I hung up on her. Was your brother in on that? On that whole situation? Yeah. So your brother was trying to get some money out of you? Yeah. They was going to split it. Oh, man. Family is crazy. That's why I say I don't have no family. I have a great team. I don't have no family. So your own family try to shake you down for 10 stacks. Yeah. That's a damn shame, man. I, listen, I, I know lots of people I'm close to that don't talk to their mothers, don't, don't talk to their fathers, don't talk to nah, their siblings. I, like, love my, I love my mother, and I'm actually trying to build a relationship with my father back. You know, but as far as his family, though, no, nah, I don't have, I never had no family. Yeah, I mean, I just interviewed Boosie recently. His, his own brother tried to steal money from him. There was a situation where I guess your brother got accused of stealing $360,000 from you. Right, 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 right. But then I guess the charges were dropped at one point. Like, what exactly happened? Uh, from what I'm knowing right now, he had. Uh, he, I know he got arrested for stealing the money. Uh, last week they came back with uh, a thing saying that the charge has been dropped on him. Uh, I'm not sure really what's going on right now. I just need my damn money, man. You know, I don't know if the Fed playing game. I don't know who playing games, bro. But you know, now they saying he ain't do it. You lock him up, now they saying somebody is playing. I, I need my money, man. You know, like somebody, I, I, I'm not gonna stop squeezing, bro. Like, I need my money, man. Like, hey, bro, I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna commit no damn bank fraud. I better not do a withdrawal. And family be the ones that try you because they think you ain't gonna do nothing to them. Yeah, and I think that like, people feel that if they're around you and you do well, they somehow are owed something. Like, yeah. remember that one time I told you to do that and you did it? Well, help me out now. Like, you know, it's like, they always think it's that bullshit. They always, you know? People always think you owe them something. Yeah, I hate that shit. It's <laughs> happened to me lots of times. Yeah, they think you know? they owe them something. And it's usually, I mean, and if they're doing well themselves, they're not going to... They never pull that shit. It's only people that you surpass. Mm -hmm. That was once on that level. On the same level as you, right. Yeah, yeah. And then once you surpass them, yeah. they feel like you owe what them. What do I owe you? Forever. Right. Yeah, you wasn't exactly. getting me up, walking me, telling me to walk to the gym. I used to walk miles. I remember when it was raining and I had to walk this big hill, probably like, I want to say probably like three miles just to go to the gym. Sleeping on couches and floors and stuff like that. I don't owe nobody nothing. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. I mean, you know, I, I feel you owe people what you agreed to to pay them. Yeah, you know, yeah. once that's done, it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. They're spending their money up and then like double back and like, let me get some more money. Once you tell them no, like. Right. right. And, and it's always like you could tell someone yes a hundred times, but that first time you tell them no. Yeah. yeah I, I had a friend who I fucked with for... 10 years, man, took him on vacations, yeah. like bought him meals, this, that. And one time he just asked me for money for, to go see his girl or something. I said, no. And he's like, oh, you gonna, you spend that money on, on some bullshit. You're not going to give that to me? Yeah. And it's like, damn, motherfucker, you, I, I, I need to check in with how I spend my money now? <laughs> right. Like, you're not in business with me. Right. That bullshit. I hate that, man. But people would definitely sit around you and figure, try to figure you out and then... They figure you out, then they try to, you know what I mean? Take take action, but Well, yeah. I and mean, unfortunately that situation kind of cost you the belt yeah. in, in a in a roundabout type of way. No, but 2018, New Year, feeling good, feeling a lot of knockouts, a lot of more shit coming. I mean, do you feel like in boxing, you know, like for example, you take any professional sport, okay, the NBA. Yeah. You have a certain number of games. Yeah. If you make it to the playoffs, then you have a few more games and you get to the finals, then boom, it's all structured. In boxing, there's really no structure. Like as a boxer, you could take as many fights as you want in a year yeah. or as few. It's really up to you and strategy wise and everything else like that. Do you feel that hurts the sport? If there was like an official, like, okay, look, you're in this weight class, you got this many fights this year, you know, to either protect your belt or to get the belt. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think that that will make a lot of um fighters damage. Mm. Cause you got to think about it. You got to see 
sometimes you take more punishment in one fight than you did another. So if you fighting back to back, you know what I mean, you in top dog fights, it'll weigh you down. You probably cut your um yeah short, okay. super short. Like like how many fights do you think a fighter should do in a year? Like for you, what's your maximum? If if I'm uh, a good year, I mean if I'm doing good, I'm four four fights. Okay, a year. every three months. Yeah. Okay, and that's that's okay in terms of your health. I mean, if you haven't, if you're not in top dog, like okay, let's say we have one. Okay, I fought somebody that's extremely good. You know, if I fought a, a um a A class fighter and I was in a war, and I come back and fight someone that's you know what I mean that's C class that I can just walk over, you know, then that's cool, but. Find somebody like an A class every time. Can't do it. Can't do it. How many of those can you do in a year? One a year? What? An A class fighter. One or two? One or two. One or two. Okay. Three at the max. Four? Yeah. You probably you're not even fighting for four top guys in a year. If you're fighting top guys, it's gonna be like three or two. Right, because you you're you're twenty three now. You went pro at 18, five years. Let's do the math. You've had 18 fights, 19 fights? 19 years. 19 fights divided by five years. Wait, hold on. 19 fights divided by five years. 3.8 fights a year. So it's pretty much what you're talking about. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit less. But than I'm four. still young, so I can still fight four fights right now. Mm -hmm. I can still fight four fights from right now till I'm 29, 28, 29. There was rumors that Mayweather was going to fight in the UFC. I never heard that. You I mean, I never, I never heard him fighting. Um, I, I seen the rumors, but I never heard. I mean, we've been on on the phone, and he never told me anything like that. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. Like, why, why would he do that? I mean, but if he could clean up. I, uh, yeah. a, a billion or, or you're not gonna two get a, billion? You're not going to get a billion. Cut it out. Who? A billion. Yes. You think he can get a billion for a UFC fight? He can get a billion. He. How, how much did he get for the McGregor fight? I, I, I don't know. It says that Floyd Mayweather's purse was $100 million. His purse was $100 His million? purse. Oh, yeah. He, he doubled that. So, so there's the back end. So let's just double it. So let's just say $200 million. You said a billion. <laughs> no, and, and 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 UFC. Yeah, he, he, for UFC, you think you get a <laughs> UFC do fighters a, don't get paid as much as boxers. No, no, he doing a fight deal. That's what it said, right? What do you mean? A fight, a fight deal. Like he fighting multiple fights. He not just fighting one. Multiple UFC yeah. fights. Yeah. Does Mayweather even know how to fight in a UFC style? He know how to box. Yeah, but UFC fights go to the ground. Not once you got good these and you and you can move like Floyd. You think you touching his legs? Yeah, I, I think you could probably touch his legs. In fact, everyone you, you know everyone one was saying a draw he won all the way around. And, and a motherfucking kick you in the face on well, top no, of that. Like you know even if I mean? he lose every last one, are he making a billion dollars? You'd have to do like ten fights in order no, to get that. He could do three or four. Three or four? Yeah. You get two hundred fifty million each time. He's what, 50 and 0? Yeah, 50 and 0. He's 50 and 0. He is one of the only boxers in the history of the sport. And the sport goes back over 100 years. You know what I mean? Lifetimes. He's one of the only, you know, as, as great as people like to say Muhammad Ali was, he lost multiple times. Right. You know what I mean? You could say, you know, Mike Tyson, one of the greatest. Buster oh, Douglas knocked him out. Yeah. You know, Vander Holyfield knocked him out. Like, you, you know what I mean? And he generated a movie. Well, money. Did, did, yeah, Vander Holyfield. I don't know if he knocked him out or whether. Oh, well, anyways, but anyways, but he he lost. He lost multiple times. Vegas make a billion dollars every time. Over a billion dollars every time. Forty five. Yeah, but that's Vegas. That's that's everything. Everybody split over thousands of people and, and stuff like that. The venue, the the hotels, everything else like that. I, I mean, I I don't I don't see. 
the UFC coming up with a billion dollars for Floyd. And and I also see Floyd potentially losing and messing up his perfect record. What, in boxing? In the UFC. Uh, no, no, no. That don't come, that don't come over to uh, UFC. His boxing record stays Yeah, high. but still, people going to look at him as... In fighting, he doesn't have a perfect record. That's like me playing basketball. I'm I'm, I'm good at basketball, and I go lose a game in, in football. I don't care about football. My thing is basketball. I shoot your You're making it sound like Floyd might really be considering this shit. I mean, I'm just saying, if he yeah. is, he never told me nothing like that. But I'm okay. Saying. I don't know, though, man. I, I think as as incredible as Floyd is with his hands... You throw some feet into the equation and groundwork, I think he's going to have some major problems. You said Floyd with these, we normally fight at 8 ounces and 10 ounces. Mm-hmm. And he 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 basically fighting at uh, bare knuckles. Right. He fighting the US right, but Floyd also doesn't knock people out. Oh, he definitely got power. Not to say he doesn't, but you don't really see him knocking people out. No, but he got power. He definitely had power. No, I'm not not judging that, but you know UFC has weight classes, right? Yeah. So you're fighting people similar size, you know, and they have the ability to kick you in the face. They have the yeah. ability to throw you on the ground and choke you, twist your arm backwards, like you know what I mean. Like, have you ever seen Floyd do any sort of groundwork? No, I never. I never seen. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. But but a billion dollars, probably over that. Who care about losing? Well, I could lose 10 times in UFC. I don't know, man. I feel Floyd's ego prevents him from losing. You no. know? 10, I mean, a, a billion dollars after just making 300? I don't know, man. I think I think Floyd is concerned about his legacy. As, as much as he's Money Mayweather and, you know, he's flashy and this, that, and the third... I think he enjoys, I think it's important for him to be considered the greatest of all time. And at this point, he kind of is. I mean, would you say Floyd is the greatest boxer of all time? Of course. But but if he loses in UFC, you think he's still, he, he's not the greatest of all time? I mean, listen, I feel you. I mean, I guess, you know, Michael Jordan went and played baseball and he wasn't that great at it. No one, no no one, one, takes, that about that. No one really takes that away from I mean, him. I, 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 I see your point, that. but baseball and basketball are not as close as UFC and boxing. You know, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know Floyd. I've never even met him. You, you know what I mean? You just gonna say that big old check? You gonna come <laughs> here? I lost four times for the check, and who say he gonna lose? So would you do UFC? Yeah, with the right check. Me? Yeah, I'm doing everything. Dancing with the stars. <laughs> the heart. WWE. Let's do it. Oh, you do wrestling and everything. Yeah, huh? fuck Pay me. Pay me. Pay you. Okay. But you don't think you'd have problems with someone on the ground? No. From Baltimore. We do that. Okay, you guys you guys wrestle. <laughs> you guys you guys punch you in the mouth and grab you and knock yeah. your teeth out. <laughs> Casanova style. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, I I feel you, man. Listen, I mean, at the end of the day, you're kind of an entertainer in a way. You know, yeah. even though you're an athlete, mm-hmm. technically you're entertaining yes. the audience. And speaking definitely. of that, that blue fur thing that you wore, what was Why that? did, huh? <laughs> that was good. I was fully for, fully for in that back in the day. Oh, that's so, what it is? Yeah. You ain't never see that? Look it up. He, um, him, Floyd versus um, Mark Cass. He had the same thing on? Yeah, he had the same thing on. And I went to get the same thing made. Okay, because I think uh, the memes was crazy. Yeah, they said Cookie Monster. Cookie yeah, Monster, yeah, right. Yeah, they, they had you yeah, side yeah. by side with the Cookie Monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good or bad, they talk about me. They talk about me. I'm, I'm grateful for the hand I'm okay. talking about. Because it was, it was a hoodie, I guess, right? Yeah, it was, it was a hoodie. A... Fur hoodie. Real fur. Yeah, I figured it looked pretty real. I figured it was going to come out with I a paper. Pretty good money for that. Uh, how much did that cost? A lot. A lot? Yeah. Tens of thousands? A lot. A lot. Okay. Um, and you won the fight, so you can't, you know? Yeah. Motherfuckers can say what they, what say they what want they to say. Want. Got paid good at the, at the, uh, um, a deduction from my purse. 
want to fight. Do you have an age where you, you feel like you're going to stop? Because uh, you're 23 now. Yeah. Floyd is 40? Yeah, 40. Floyd 40. Yeah. Which you don't see very often. I mean, you see... Um, what, what's the name of the dude um, who fought to a really old older age? Um, B-Hop. Yeah. Bernard. Bernard Hopkins. I actually interviewed him at his house in, uh, well, in Philly. Yeah, in his high rise. Yeah. 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 He got um, knocked out. Yeah, he fought into his mid forties, almost fifty. But but not to talk. You know what I mean, he was he was fighting people that 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 they know he could beat. Yeah, they was they was doing the right way. So he still, you know what I mean, he Bernard Hawkins, and they giving him opponents to, that he's supposed to beat at that age. Right, because I guess there's I guess like professional losers and boxers and yeah. boxing where yeah. like. Dudes will basically just come for the check. Yeah, we'll yeah. just show up, lose, yeah, yeah. get, get check. the check, and then go do another fight, lose, and just use where, where young fighters use them to kind of build up their yeah. records and stuff like that. That's a real thing. Yeah, but they also come. They also come to try to knock you out, knock your head off, knock your set off. Yeah, I mean, do you feel a certain age is too old to fight? I mean, we can go. I said something on Twitter probably about like um, three weeks ago, something like that. I was just saying that the OGs need to hang it up in boxing because you got to think about it. It's young, hungry people coming from nothing. You know what I mean? And, and if y'all don't hang it up, every time y'all try to step in front of us, we're going to show you what we're made of. And we ain't showing no remorse or nothing. We Like Kodo, just for and they was mad that I said that. But I wasn't actually talking about Kodo. I was just saying the OGs that was in the game before us need to, you know what I mean? They need to respect us. If not, you're going to go out, ass up, face down. Right. I mean, it's a young man's game to a certain degree. Yeah. I mean, Floyd. I'm, saying, I'm not disrespecting the OG. I'm just saying yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, as you get older, your body can't heal the same way. It's. Yeah, it so is what it is. You gotta take. You gotta take. You know what I mean? You gotta take care of your body. And if you know you're not at that up the par as this young man that's coming up, you know he got a lot. He got a lot to to prove. So if you trying to, if you ain't got that same hunger as you had since you was eight years old, don't step in there with no young lion. <laughs> Please don't. Not with me. You know, I mean, with boxing, it, it's kind of historically been focused on the heavyweights, right? You know, like the Muhammad Ali era, yeah. the Mike Tyson era, the George, you know, the George Foreman yeah, era. Floyd, stuff like came. That. Floyd came and kind of changed it, changed it a bit, <clears throat> you know, and I mean, there are great fighters, you know, in his weight class before him, but he, he definitely changed the game. But it seems like for a very long time, there hasn't really been a superstar heavyweight. You know, there's been good heavyweights, but I feel like Mike Tyson was the last superstar heavyweight, and before him was Ali. But since that time, you've never seen a dude that's been at, like, just a totally dominant kind of figure like that. But why do you think that is? They're not marketable, and they're not, and they're not going, they're not, they don't have that instant, like, like, um, Mike Tyson. Like Tyson was coming to kill, nothing less. A lot of people, that's why I have the boxing world right now. Because nobody had that mentality like I have it right now. Or Mike Tyson, or Floyd mm -hmm. Mill, Pretty Boy Floyd. That's why the lane is just so open. Have you ever met Tyson? No, I never met him. I met him once. Yeah. He, he kind of crazy for real. <laughs> <laughs> He's for real crazy. Yeah. Like off camera crazy. For real? Yeah, I met him. I met him. It was like uh, I was a mixtape DJ at the time. You know, yeah. DJ Vlad, and I had this uh, this mixtape with, with Game, and he was coming out, going into like a soul food restaurant yeah. in Inglewood or something. Like we were in the hood somewhere, and, I, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna go get Mike Tyson my mixtape. So I'm like, oh excuse me, Mike, I'm DJ Vlad. Here's my mixtape. He's like, thank you. This is your mixtape. I said, yeah. You made this mixtape. Yeah. This mixtape was made by you. Yeah. This is your mixtape. And he just kept asking me over and over again. And it's like, 
it's Mike Tyson. So I keep answering the question. Like, you know, I mean, this, I mean, he, he's huge in person. This was back, you know, years and years ago where he was yeah. still huge. And it's like, he just kept asking me over and over again. And I'm like, whew, this motherfucker on some shit right now. But I got to keep telling him, like, you know, he's like, okay, thank you. Then yeah. he just walked into the restaurant. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it That's my one Mike Tyson story, man. Yeah. You know? I never met him, though. Yeah, I mean, he was, I mean, you know, kind of like you. He was knocking people out a couple seconds in. Like, yeah. it was like, it was so exciting because it's like. We know we're going to get a knockout. Yeah, he was bigger than boxing. You know what I'm saying? People who had no interest in boxing, never watched boxing matches, all knew about Tyson. On um, You know, all would, would tune in and watch his shit, you know. But, you know. Based on bad decisions and not really listening to his trainers and everything, he got knocked out. Yeah. Like, I remember, you know, I'm, I'm older than you. Like, I remember watching that Buster Douglas fight. And it was like. They said people was crying. Yo, that shit was like. Yeah, that is sad. Buster Douglas was one of these, like, you know, these dudes that no one, like, he wasn't really ranked high or yeah. anything else like that. But I guess his mother just died. Oh, for real? So he had. A certain Chip degree of yeah, anger and everything else like that. And Tyson wasn't really listening to his trainers. He was had big entourages, was fucking around, probably doing drugs at the time, everything else like that. He came in and just got his ass whooped. They said people was crying bad. Like it was an upset. Yeah, it was like hundred to one odds. Like I remember like the the betting was insane on that. Like you could put Tyson in favor? Of course. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the odds were like like literally like, you know, $100 would get you like 10 Gs. Like, you know, if you bet on, on Buster Douglas. It's you know? crazy. But then, you know what happened afterwards to Douglas, right? Whatever. He just got fat, lazy. He probably made a shit ton of money get, off get, that. Yeah, he made a bunch of money off of it. Had one other fight, I think against Holyfield, and Holyfield destroyed him. He got so fat that he gave himself diabetes. You know what I mean? He's living. I think so. I think so. But he was in bad. And then he tried to come back years later, and it was just like, you know, after the money was gone. That's why a lot of um, Mexican fighters and Spanish fighters, they, they get that good that good uh, payday. They go back to that country, be rich. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, uh, he's still alive. He's 57. Uh-huh. He's 57. Yeah, he had 46 fights, 38 wins. Six losses, one draw, one no contest. Six losses? You can't lose six times in this area. Yeah? Hell no. I'm not trying to lose, period. Yeah. At all, not one loss. I can't Can't afford it. You trying to be like Floyd? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot afford it. 19 and 0, you got 30, 31 more fights. Yeah, 31 more fights. 31 more knockouts. Yep. That's what it is. <laughs> well, Javante, man, appreciate you coming in, man. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, you know, I feel like you're part of the, that next generation yes. to really usher in the next level of greatness in boxing. Yes, you know, yeah. which to me is actually my favorite sport. Yes. Like, I, I like watching boxing more than any other sport, honestly. Right. You know, so, man, I want to, you know, here's to, to 19, to 31 more, more knockouts, man. What it is. Yes, thank you.